Fran, you've seen this England team grow and obviously the Euros was the absolute top experience for you all. And, you know, and do you still feel that this World Cup is another place to show that how good you can keep going and moving on forward? Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing with this team is they're never satisfied. We're never satisfied with, you know, what we've achieved and we've got a taste of that success now and hopefully we can build on it going into this tournament. But I think, you know, the way the team has grown in the last few years is a really special moment for me to have been a part of, to change in culture, change in environment, obviously bringing in a new manager and being able to, you know, perform on the world stage like we did at the Euros. I think it's a really special group and I'm really, really hoping that the girls have an amazing tournament and hopefully, you know, they come back with that trophy. Uh, have you been in touch with many of your teammates out there and how they're feeling? Yeah, I have. I've, I've set up a WhatsApp group with uh, Jess and Beth nice. England to kind of keep up with them and see how they're doing and I'm messaging them all the time. And yeah, I mean, it's really nice to stay in touch with them. And obviously, you know, I have some amazing friends in the team. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they do well and that they come back with a medal. Yeah. Well, it's a great thing. One thing I, especially when I was playing tournaments, you know, the, you notice the difference in the team from four years previously when your world, next World Cup comes along and you, you see young players getting their opportunity, but then, like you've just mentioned, the experienced ones who have got roles to play. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's a few girls in there who have played in multiple tournaments now and obviously some of the girls won Champions League, won Euros, won WSL. So, you know, the, the squad has a lot of experience in there in terms of the pressures of having to win and pressure of high moments. So I think that experience is invaluable when it comes to tournaments and coming on to playing in games where, you know, even the first game, you're going to have the nerves going into it. So that type of experience is really, really important going into games like this. On paper, this is certainly the weakest side in England's group with Denmark and China to come. Um, but of course, England come into this having not won in their last three, haven't scored in their last three as well. Is there any concern for you for the Lionesses coming into this opening game? I think it's difficult to tell when it comes to World Cups and tournaments because anything can happen. I think we've seen so far, there's been a sh few shock results in the tournament already. So I don't think it's something that we're going to go into thinking, you know, we haven't won in a few games. As soon as you step on that pitch in a World Cup in a tournament, everything changes. And it's all about building momentum and building off the back of your first game. So, of course, there's going to be nerves going into it. Of course, maybe there will be that lingering feeling like we haven't won in a, in a couple of games. We need to try and build on it. But I think mm. when you get into a World Cup and start, it's just a clean slate. Yeah, It's just starting from fresh, starting from game one and just building as you go in. I mean... I wouldn't like to see the girls peak in the game today because yeah. it's the first game of the tournament. I want to see them peak and when they get to quarterfinals and, you know, that you that's where you see people really come to life and mm. really show their ability. I think right now the aim is to get out of the group, however that looks, however they play, obviously building some sort of momentum, but not going people have had their best game in the World Cup in the first game yeah. because obviously you have to build on it as you go through the tournament. It's quite weird as you're talking there, Fran. I'm I'm thinking back to previous tournaments I played in and we didn't get any good results before the start of the tournament. <laughs> well, we, we, that doesn't happen for us. <laughs> and then we done really well when we went to them. So, yeah. you know, it, it is it is that, that idea, what you talked about, Fran, of building on something and as everybody gets fitter and gets sort of more engaged with the tournament you and the buzz, it just all grows yeah absolutely and that feeling of sense of belonging in the tournament I think when you start the first game you have them nerves but you kind of get on the pitch and you move around and you get a feel for it and then it's like you're just playing in any game again so I think it's just getting out there having the whistle blown and knowing that you're in this tournament it's started you've got there you've achieved it and then it's just about going out and expressing yourselves and I don't think you really get that until like you said the last kind of two three games of the group stages even maybe getting into the round of 16 because you have that buzz that nerve about being in a world cup that you have to kind of get over it and know that you're there and you hopefully you're going to be there for a long time. So, I mean, obviously, like I said, there's going to be some nerves going into this game. There always is for any game that you're going to play in. Obviously, this is now elite stage, global stage, but the girls have been there. They've done it. There's a few in there who've won Champions League, like I said. So, I mean, the experience going into it is very, very high. And hopefully, you know, they're able to manage that pressure and expectation. There are a few sort of question marks about the England team that Serena Vegan could play. Notably, there is the debate of is it Alessia Russo or perhaps Rachel Daly or Bethany England as well that could come into the reckoning as, as the number nine. And might, it might be a difficult one to ask you, Fran, because you know everyone, but who would you be picking? I mean, 
they all have their strengths. I think it really depends on the game plan. I think if you're looking at a game plan, you know, that suits one of the number nines better, then obviously Serena's going to go with that choice. But I don't think you can say, you know, we're going to play this person because of this one reason. I think there's going to be a whole bunch of reasons as why you to play someone. And ultimately it is down to the game plan. I think as fans and as, you know, people watching from the outside, you want this person to play, but you don't know what Serena is expecting from that number nine. Mm -hmm. So I think for Serena, it has to be based on what game plan she's going with and who she believes can pull off that game plan to the level that she wants. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.